What I've learned about writing is that sometimes less is more, while often more is grander. And both are true. Rochelle E. Goodrick. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Essence. Today, we are talking about a particular topic that came up on our Discord server as we were discussing what we wanted to do for this month. So even though, yes, in our four-letter word series, which is like nine-ish, it's really early on, we have covered show versus tell. But the question keeps coming up, so we're going to keep covering it. We got a variety of answers when this question was asked on our Discord server. A couple other people chiming in. Thank you all, by the way. A lot of the responses that we got and the back and forth that we had was about specifically how to identify show versus tell. And our suggestions for that is to read amateur writing. Reading bad fan fiction is a really good way to identify what is showing versus telling. I did a lot of telling in my fan fiction days. We all did. It is very easy to see the scene in your head and then go, okay, and then she walks down the hall and then he does this and she whips around and smacks him and, 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 and then. That is all very distant from the emotions of the character that doesn't immerse the reader in the scene. That is all telling. And it's very common in amateur writing, which is why a lot of people will say, show, don't tell. Here is an opportunity to make your writing better by showing this thing. Another good way to identify this problem is by finding scenes that summarize something where they are trying to hurry up and rush to the next point. Most of the time, those summarizing bits are telling us rather than showing us. This isn't always a bad thing, especially if the summary is over something that's really boring. (laughs) But there are still ways to show us in an interesting way. If the character is knocking on doors to see if anyone witnessed the murder, then you can say, he spent all afternoon knocking on doors and no one gave him an answer. We don't need to spend a full chapter on that, although you could if you're really thin on words. Or you can have a sequence of knock, knock. Did you see anything on the night of Tuesday the 17th? No. Door slam. Knock, knock. Did you see anything on the night of Tuesday the 17th? Yes, because this thing that's completely not relevant. You can go through a quick showing, or you can just go, he didn't get any answers. The neighbors were all deaf or useless. And another way to identify is to read books and look for two things. Anything that is informative or, you know, telling or evocative, showing. Informative here meaning it's using the brain part, it's using the homework assignments part of reading, whereas evocative is using the heart part, it's using the feeling and emotion and connecting with, which is a lot more of why we read. So once you have identified it, there are also a handful of ways that people on our Discord server suggested as far as fixing and showing instead of telling. The one that I found particularly interesting for a suggestion was to read poetry. I think that's an outstanding suggestion because poetry is all about using quick efficiency while being very evocative in bringing out emotion and feeling. And that is what our goal is with showing, is bringing out, again, that heart part, the emotion in the writing. So even if you have no interest in poetry or learning how to write it, reading it can help you get better at showing. If someone says, hey, you're telling here, not showing, and you're telling because it's uninteresting to you, so you're just kind of wanting to skip past it, but they're asking you, hey, show instead, a good way to fix it is to approach an old topic from a new angle. I recently read through Homer's Odyssey, and it was a fantastic translation, and they're talking about the spirits of the dead all migrating at one point. And they say that they were all squeaking like bats. That is not a sentence I ever thought I would hear in relation to the souls of the dead. But it was an interesting way to tell something that could be very boring. And it showed me and it gave me a very vivid image of how the scene was progressing. And if nothing else, 
sprinkle in some metaphors. Metaphors help your readers feel instead of just understand something. You can equate whatever is happening to something that the readers will understand better through the use of creative language metaphors. This is especially relevant if you are talking about magic systems or some other sort of bit of world building, because now we have an emotion attached to whatever it is that you're describing, and we are more likely to remember it. So if it's not obvious, we are still very big fans of this particular rule. There are very good reasons why the rule is here. I particularly love showing over telling because there is very little artistry in telling. Telling usually comes across as very bland or uninteresting because I just keep getting told how the people are feeling, what I should be feeling, what is happening, rather than letting me experience it with the character. One of my favorite go-to bits of advice is to prove it. That's because it gets the emotions involved. It connects with the reader. When you are just telling, it's something that they are memorizing in order to call back later, hopefully if it's relevant. If not, then I'm wasting my time. It's this very logical thought process instead of connecting with your reader on a very emotional basis. If you're showing, they're going to remember it anyway. And like Lee said earlier, we read so we can experience other worlds, other lived experiences, so we can feel and be connected even if we can't go out into the world. Telling limits that experience because there is no emotion involved. It is all very logical information presentation. Details are what immerse the reader. The vivid details pull them in, get them to be part of the world, to really experience and live it. The more vivid the detail, the less they recognize the real world around them because they are fully immersed. If you are telling them, though, it can easily take them out of the book and back into the real world. Now, this series is about breaking the rules. We've spent most of this episode telling you why this rule exists and to show as often as possible and to tell as rarely as possible. How do we break that rule? Telling is useful in a lot of cases. It is very efficient. It can be good for skimming over the boring bits of a story. If you have important details that need to get out... Instead of going on and on about the full details of Gandalf skimming through the archives to get all of the information about the ring and what it is and how to discover if a ring is the one ring, we just see real quick shots of him glancing through and then going, oh, here's the thing. So that is a very telling moment where you can summarize a whole week's worth of archive searching in a sentence or two. Telling is also really useful for scene transitions and especially starting a scene in that you can immediately set the scene and then show at the same time. You don't show instead of tell, you show and tell. So you can start a new scene with something like, he hated the cold. And with those couple of words, we immediately get an idea of emotions, environment, and the character within one very short sentence that is a very telling sentence rather than a showing sentence. In contrast, a showing sentence here would be, he shivered grumbling about the cold and blah, blah, blah. But the efficiency of he hated the cold is very good to use. I also want to point out that point of view characters and non-point of view characters will approach telling and showing differently. In the case of he hated the cold, we know he is the point of view character. If some other character is there with him and she is biting her lip and flexing her fists in order to try to keep blood pumping to them, then we can see she doesn't like the cold either. We are showing her and telling him. We can only do this because we are taking his perspective so we can see inside his mind and the thoughts that he is thinking but we can't see inside her mind. So keeping in mind your point of view is very important here as well. And in that same vein, you can tell within dialogue. Anybody that your point of view character is talking to is going to be telling them information. 
if you have it in the character's voice to be the storyteller, the one who waxes poetic about this and that and uses the equivalent of song lyrics in all of his dialogue, you don't get to have every character do that. One character is enough. This is not a party of all bards. Yes. Showing in dialogue can be done through word choice of the character saying that stupid dog that always barks will show us that they don't like the dog. But you can very easily tell by saying, I hate that dog. Dialogue telling is more than welcome. This is one of those rules that I don't encourage you to break a lot, but I really do encourage you to understand when this should be broken. Because if absolutely everything we read was shown, it would be laborious to get through. This is one of those things that your genre will reflect how much you tell versus show. If you're writing something that has a very quick clip to it, being efficient with your words, being precise, being intentional with your words, and sometimes telling to get over the boring parts is perfectly acceptable. If you're writing like Tolkien, then it's expected that you have way too many words to describe a tree. That's just who Tolkien is. So figure out which moments work best for you Get to the good part and write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>